Stay well, Alan. Stay well. Thanks for 59 plus. A VK3, X ray, X ray Yankee slash Delta United 4 in the Philippines. India Kilo Zero, Echo Tokyo Alpha. Good. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, here we have a brand new all in one Web SDR. Now, this comes from the same team that brought us the RX AAA SDR that I've featured in a couple of videos on this channel. Now it features a 16-bit ADC DDC architecture and can support up to 63 megahertz of real-time bandwidth. It covers from 1 kilohertz up to 61 megahertz on the HF port and then 115 megahertz to 145 megahertz on the airband port. Now more about those different band ports later in the video. There's an onboard gigabit ethernet port a expandable IOs which can be used for antenna switching and it has a clock reference in and out. You also notice that one of the SMA ports is for a GPS antenna, something like this. Now this is an active GPS antenna and it's available from eBay or Amazon and it's only for a few dollars. Now you do not have to use a GPS antenna, but if you do, then the internal clock frequency will be adjusted for more accuracy based on the GPS timing. Now on one end, where the Ethernet socket is, you also see two USB sockets. The one is to power the Web AAA, and the other allows you to connect accessories. Now you must use a power supply capable of delivering at least two amps. Something like a Raspberry Pi power supply is suitable, or even an Apple iPhone stroke iPad charger, as these are extremely clean in terms of RFI, which of course is something you do not want if you're going to be using an SDR receiver. Now one accessory which is useful could be a small Wi-Fi adapter, allowing you to either use the web AAA over an ad hoc Wi-Fi connection or even connect to your local Wi-Fi router. Now I'll cover this later in the video and show you how you configure this. There's also an EXT IO port, which I mentioned a moment ago, can be used to control antenna switches. Now, software wise, the Web AAA runs Alpine Linux 3.2 with a Linux 6.6 .6 kernel. The SDR software is based on OpenWebRx and it also inherits a large portion of the Kiwi SDR code base. Now, don't worry, this is not a clone as such. The developers of Web AAA have in fact incorporated and contributed to code improvements that Kiwi SDR have actually implemented themselves. As the hardware is different, there's over 300 plus changes made to the code base to support more WF channels and provide support for the FPGA. Think of the Web AAA software as not a clone, but a fork of the Kiwi SDR software to innovate on top of it. Now I had to mention that bit in there because I know some of you like to quickly assume that everything that comes out of China is a clone or a ripoff, but this project actually helps the community and you guys, the users, and even Kiwi SDR users. Some other cool features included in the software consists of up to 13 real-time receiver channels, which can be used for whisper or FT8 skimming. Now that's 13 frequencies monitored and decoded at the same time. And then obviously if you have internet available, it will automatically spot those reports to like the PSK Reporter website. Now you also notice a micro SD card slot that's labeled as a TF card slot. Now this is where the operating system will be loaded. You will obviously need an SD card with the image on it, otherwise, well, it just won't work. Now an SD card is not provided, but these are cheap enough to purchase on eBay or Amazon. Now the software image is a free download from the RX888 website, and you can choose between a stable release or an alpha release to test the latest improvements and features. Now you would have also noticed a little fan on the top of the Web AAA. Of course, something like this is meant to be left running all the time, especially if it's exposed to the public via the internet. So a little cooling fan is needed to help keep it cool and keep up the performance. Now you can actually monitor the internal temperature using the admin page, which I'll show you shortly. Now before that though, let me show you inside as I'm sure some of you will want to see the internal hardware. And as a side note guys, not sure if you've seen these before, but they're actually pretty awesome. It's just a small electric rechargeable screwdriver 
and it comes with many popular attachments. Now, it definitely saves time if you want to take things apart and put them back together again like I do. Now, I'll leave a link to this in the video description if you want to take a look and know more about it. So inside, it's just one main PCB and it looks pretty well laid out to me. Now, I know I've said this in the past, but I really do like these black PCBs. Don't ask me why, but if you do too, then let me know in the comments. Of course, I'm not entirely sure the color makes it work better, but who knows? Right, okay, so let's start by downloading the software image from the website. And then what we're gonna do is then write it to a micro SD card, connect some antennas, and then take a look around the software. Now this is the instructions from the website. So after downloading either the stable or alpha version, you need to format a micro SD card using the FAT32 format. You can format the SD card through your operating system. And once formatted, uncompress the downloaded firmware archive to the root folder of the SD card. While it's copied, the file structure should look like this. Now just pop the micro SD card into the web AAA TF card slot like this. And remember it's inserted with the contact side facing upwards. That's assuming that you're holding the web AAA like this as well. Now all you need to do is plug in an antenna, plug in an ethernet cable into that ethernet port, which goes to your home router and then plug in a power supply. Give it a few seconds and then check your router's device list for the IP address of the web AAA. Now, once you have the web AAA local IP address, you can then open a browser on any computer on your home network, preferably using the Chrome browser, and then just type the IP address into the address bar, followed by the default port number of 8073, just like this. Now you can change that port number in the admin page if you want to, and we'll take a look at the admin page a bit later in the video. Now you should be presented with a screen like this and you'll start to see and hear signals. And, uh, she lives here in, uh, in uh, Sprotley, which is east of the city of Hull. Now and again we've been back to Suffolk and uh, we had a uh, week's holiday. Now you can use the mouse from your computer to navigate through the bands using the thumb wheel to zoom in and zoom out and then click and drag left or right. On the bottom right of the screen, however, is the main controls. And this is where you can choose things like the demodulation type, like FM, AM, SSB, for example. There's also some inbuilt digital decoders, which can be enabled here, but we'll look at them more closely soon. The currently tuned frequency is indicated by this little yellow bar across the top there. And you can see the exact tuned frequency in the bottom right dialog. Now there's also a pop out selection box which will jump to the selected band. These are like presets for specific bands. Now this covers most popular bands that you might want to listen to, like NDBs, medium wave or any of the ham radio HF bands. Now just next to the band selection, there is a digital decoder selection box. A web AAA software has built in decoders, so you can decode things like SSTV, weather facts, CW, FSK and even DRM, which is digital radio over HF. Now let's take a look at some examples of these digital modes being demodulated and decoded. So here we have a HF fax decoder. Essentially, these are weather charts being transmitted via fax over HF. The intended recipients of these faxes are actually vessels out at sea. They can take a few minutes to come through fully and depending on the time of day will depend on what frequency you'll find these transmissions. Now this next example is using the FSK decoder and here we're tuned to a frequency around 7.6 megahertz. The FSK transmission is being decoded into human readable text and this particular FSK transmission contains weather reports, again most likely for vessels out at sea. Now there's no diagrams or images sent with this transmission. It is purely ASCII based text in the English language. Weather information is also broadcast around 8.7 megahertz using upper sideband. And here we're receiving a USCG marine weather broadcast being transmitted from somewhere in the United States region. It's four to six feet. 
NDBs are essentially CW beacons and can be found way down on the lower portion of the HF band. This one in particular is on a frequency of 433 kHz. Now when we think of aircraft, especially voice radio transmissions, we may think of frequencies around 120 MHz using AM. But did you know that aircraft also use HF frequencies, just like this in this transmission at around 8.8 .8 MHz using upper sideband? Now also included in the list of decoders is actually a CW decoder, which is Morse code. Any decoded Morse code transmissions will appear in ASCII readable text on the top left window. Now sometimes it works okay and sometimes it doesn't. I guess you have to have a really good signal to noise ratio to get those best decodes. As the web AAA can receive up to 60 MHz bandwidth at the same time, viewing the entire HF band is possible and it kind of looks like this. Using your mouse, you can zoom in to any part of the band you wish to listen to or check if signals are present. DRM or digital radio mondial is a form of digital transmission normally found on the HF frequencies. Now commercial radio stations will intermittently transmit their programs using this digital format throughout the day. The web 888 software has a built-in DRM decoder so you can listen to these digital commercial radio stations just like this. Now at the start of the video, I mentioned that the web 888 software has the ability to monitor 13 different frequencies at the same time. Now within the admin page, specifically on the extensions tab, you can define 13 different frequencies or bands and assign whether they decode FTA or whisper. You can also set these to auto start when the web 888 is powered on. To have each of the spots uploaded to the appropriate databases like PSK Reporter, for example, then you must have your reporter information filled out here. Now this is just your call sign and your maiden head locator. And once it's been running for a few minutes, you can check the log files and you should see any of those received and decoded spots that were uploaded to the database websites listed in this log file. Now I left mine monitoring FTA on all of the HF bands and after a few hours I checked the PSK reporter website to see what stations I had heard at my station using the web 888 and more importantly where these transmissions were coming from. Now take a look at this. Europe is pretty predominant here but I'm receiving FTA transmissions from around the world just on my 71 feet of wire up at around 10 meters in the air. Of course, listening to the hand bands is also possible, just using a regular SSB at the same time as those 13 skimmers run in the background. And this is all possible due to the wide 60 megahertz real-time bandwidth and the processing power of the web 888. If you haven't seen this already, then this is called SSTV. It's a way ham radio operators can send still images across the airwaves to other users. Using software connected to their radios or receivers, they're able to send and receive these images on set frequencies. 14.230 MHz on the upper sideband is a very popular SSTV frequency, and with the SSTV decoder loaded, any SSTV transmissions will be received, demodulated, and then converted to an actual image you can see on the screen. Now the web AAA also has the ability to receive air band and the upper frequency limit of this also covers the two meter hand band. You cannot use HF and VHF at the same time though and this has to be changed or configured within the admin page. Now before I show you some examples of receiving the air band and two meter hand band, let me just quickly go over that admin page. Now to access the admin page, you use the same URL in your browser, but you just add forward slash admin at the end. You will then be presented with this screen. Of course, you can make this page secure with a password if you want to. The status tab, which is the first tab shown, it shows you some information about connected users. Also the current temperature of the web 888. The control tab allows you to change some settings on how the web 888 performs including the setting to switch between HF reception or VHF reception. From this page, you can also kick any connected users. 
The Connect tab controls how or if your web AAA is exposed to others on the internet. Of course, further configuration is required through your local router or any domains that you want to use. The Web Page tab allows you to style how the main interface is displayed to the user that's viewing it, along with some further settings lower down to enable or disable clock correction from a connected GPS receiver. The Public tab allows you to fill out some personal information about the receiver, such as its location and the admin's email address. Now, this information will be presented to any possible users that connect or view the Web AAA's main SDR interface. The DX tab hosts a whole load of predefined markers or memories, those little markers at the top of the waterfall that you can click on. You can enable or disable automatic download of a community database from here, or you can edit, delete, or even add your own markers. The Update tab allows you to update the main Web AAA software, all from this backend admin page, without the need to upgrade files directly onto the micro SD card. You can choose between stable and alpha versions here too. Of course, the Web AAA will need to be connected to a network which has an internet connection for this to work. The Network tab contains some settings related to the port number that you use to access the main page. Now, this is very useful if you're port forwarding through your own router and need to make some special settings. The GPS tab will just show you all the GPS information that's being received. Now, that's assuming that you actually have a GPS antenna attached. It's a great way of making sure that it's working. The log tab is essentially what it's named. It shows a log of all the things happening within the web AAA in real time. The console tab allows console access or via a terminal window to the web AAA operating system. Now, this is useful for enabling or disabling a USB Wi-Fi dongle if you have one attached. Now instructions on how to enable or disable a Wi-Fi dongle can be found online on the web AAA support pages like here. The console page is where you'd actually enter those commands. The extension tab is where you can change some settings for each of the included decoders. Now the only one that I actually tested or altered was the FTA extension, and that's where I tested 13 active skimmers at the same time. Lastly, there is a security tab where you can enable, disable, and set access passwords for users and admins. So if you want to use the Web AAA as a VHF receiver instead of an HF receiver, then you need to set this on the control page within admin. The Web AAA will need to be restarted once you make this change though. Also, you need to ensure that you have a VHF antenna connected to the SMA port labeled Air on the actual Web AAA. Airband reception works extremely well and you can see the entire airband at the same time. So you can easily see where all the activity is. I just one zero, Roger. So the one three echo turn left, heading one five zero degrees, the zone level 200, level of being towed That's heading one five zero degrees, the level 200, level of being towed should one three echo. Should one three echo, reduce speed now to two seven zero knots. That's two seven knots, should one three echo. Bluebird 1 8 Alpha, heading 150 degrees, the sun level 200, be level of being so bad. Heading 150. There's also just enough bandwidth at the top of the band to receive transmissions on the 2 meter handband. This is Golf 1, Golf at Delta, Bravo listening. Any call, a first connection to Freestar, never use the network, G1, G, and DB, anybody about? Anyway, guys, that's the Web Triple Eight. And at the current time of recording this video, I think this is being sold on AliExpress at around £200, which is an absolute bargain for what you get. Now, I'll leave a link down in the video description below, and this is actually the official seller of this product. So I would advise to use that link to purchase the product if you want to get one. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, take care and see you in the next video.